CataractCoach.com. I got a VIP patient with pseudoxfoliation and IFIS, floppy iris syndrome. Here's how to succeed in this case without pupil rings or hooks. Now, I can't tell you too much more about this patient, but just trust me, this is an absolute VIP patient. Starting off here, this is the maximum pharmacologic dilation. That's it. 10% final effort many times. That's all I got. And so here, putting in some anesthetic inside the eye, this is some phenylephrine as well as some preservative-free lidocaine. And that helps give me a little more dilation. And you can see it's a reasonably dense cataract here, a lot of posterior subcapsular content as well. Now, as I put the viscoelastic in, here's our dispersive agent. Look at that, viscomedriasis. Osher taught me that. Osher's the godfather, the best. Now you can see we got a little bit more dilation with that viscomedriasis. And now getting the eye positioned appropriately. Look at that, good draping, eye in primary. Nicely done. Here's the fixation ring. Here comes the diamond making you fake a incision. It's a 2.0 millimeter diamond, so I'll go ahead, enter here, and make it a little wider, maybe about 2.2 to 2.4, somewhere in that range. Slightly wider incision there. And now, and of course, notice how I, how I hit the limbo blood vessels in order to get great long-term sealing. Don't make incisions that are totally vascular. Now, poking into the capsule here, a little bit of capsular zone, uh, laxity there, right? You saw a little bit of wrinkling. Not terrible, though. So that's a good sign. Now, we're getting the rexes done. And I'm going to make the rexus about as big or even slightly bigger than the pupil. Notice how you don't see the rexus edge as we're doing this because I'm making it right at the pupil margin or even slightly larger. So even though this patient doesn't dilate well, I still want to have that five to five and a half millimeter rexus. And that's why I've got those forceps that are measured there. They're marked off. So I know exactly how big to make the rexus. There it is. We've got a nice looking rexus done. Now, this is a complete cataract case shown start to finish. So I'm going to show you everything here. Now, you can see by the, the video here, this is the red reflex optimized, just two of the precanial images. Look at the cornea there. The two lights there, yeah, that's just the two uh, coaxial illuminations. Now, here's the nucleus out of the capsule bag. And now going into the side port here, a little more viscoelastic behind the nucleus. Yep. And look at that. We're going to have the pupil hold the nucleus for us. Now, we go back to regular illumination. So, look at the red reflex. Or look at the Purkinje image. Three dots now. One, two, three. The two similar dots are the coaxial in my oculars. And the one other light is the paraxial. So that Purkinje image gives away the answer here. That's why you have great illumination. Everywhere it's per, uh, paraxial. Now, a little more viscoelastic here to protect the corneal endothelium. Keep that nucleus up. So notice how the nucleus is tilted partially out of the capsule bag. I'm using the nucleus you know, or the pupil to hold the nucleus for me. Take a probe going inside the eye with the right hand. And then we're going to buzz in here. Chopper going to go around the back side. And look, let's split the nucleus. Look at this. Ready? One, two, three. Pow. Split that nucleus beautifully. And now let's just aspirate out that first piece or the first quadrant or half. And then chop some more. Chop, chop, and more chop is the name of the game for me. Here's another chop. There it is. And so we'll chop this up pretty nicely here. And again, this is a very VIP patient for me. I do not want to put in a capsule expansion or pupil expansion ring. I don't want to do that or, or, or iris hooks. And the reason is that pupil expansion ring or iris hooks, they do damage the iris. Let's be honest here. You look at an eye, this lamp, a year after cataract surgery, you can tell they had iris hooks in the eye. You can tell they had a pupil expansion ring or malugan ring, whatever you want to use. You can tell. I don't want to do that. And so I want to keep this as easy as we can. Look at that. Nucleus is already gone. Look at the chopper too, by the way. Keep the chopper in that safe position just because I don't want that poster capsule coming up no matter what. So, all right, God, done. Look at that. Pow, beautiful. Got that nucleus out pretty easily. Now look at the pupil coming down a little bit though. So maybe it's like four and a half-ish millimeters at the moment. And now we're ready for the eye probe to remove the cortex. Now keep in mind, you have to keep track of the cortex. So as I aspirate out cortex here, I'm thinking in my mind, okay, that's removed, that's removed. Kind of go systematically in a, in a clockwise or counterclockwise manner like I'm showing you here. And also look carefully at the capsule rexus edge. Why? Well, as you remove cortex, the capsule rexus margin or the edge should not move at all. If you see the rexus edge moving a little bit even, that's indicative of zonulopathy. And again, this patient with pseudoexfoliation could very well have that. So you want to be very careful here. So cleaning up the capsule bag, that looks really good. Yep. Now, there, this patient did have a posterior subcapsular. And so there is some like really adherent stuff to the posterior capsule. What should we do there? Hmm. Hard to say, right? Let's put in the viscoelastic. 
And we'll put it in there. There we go. And there are some of the posterior opacities. Again, those were stuck there on the posterior capsule. This patient had a 4-plus posterior subcapsule cataract as well as the nuclear component. And so here I'm polishing the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim, make sure we get all that out. Now, what do you do with the stuff that's on the posterior capsule right there? Again, this is a VIP patient. I cannot even risk a 1 in a 1,000 chance of having a posterior capsule rupture. Now, the cataract is 99% removed. That little bit of smudgy stuff on the posterior capsule, uh, let's see. Let's get the lens in first, and then we can decide. So here comes the patient lens. It's a single-piece monofocal acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. Now, look at the capsule bag. A little bit of wrinkling there, right? Yeah, there's some zonulopathy here. It's relatively mild, but there's some. Again, the patient has pseudo exfoliation. You're not going to undo decades of pseudo exfoliation. Now, let's lift up the iris and just check. And we're making, sh making sure that what? The eye wall is completely in the capsule bag. And my view is obviously a little bit more than your view here on the video. And also making sure that there's nothing left in the capsule bag. So no cortex remaining at the capsule bag equator. And that looks great. So I think we're good here. So let's go in behind the optic, remove viscoelastic. Like, can I get any of that posterior stuff, that little smudgy stuff off the posterior capsule? Let me try. I'll be gentle here. But again, I don't want to risk the capsule break. So the vast majority of the posterior po uh, plaque there for the PSC has been removed. Do you want to risk it? No, nah, you know what I've learned? The better part of judgment here is to be a little more conservative. So I try to remove it. Can I get it off? I just, it just doesn't want to come. I try aspirate it. I'm touching it. I mean scraping it. But you know what? We're doing fine. So let's get the lens in good position here. Let's take out the rest of the viscoelastic. Let's seal this up, call it a day. And we'll plan on doing this patient's YAG laser capsulotomy in a few months. And again, this patient, I'll tell you right now, had 20-20 vision on post-op day one, was absolutely amazed, so thankful. But again, those few little spots here on the posterior capsule, yeah, they're just a little bit too adherent. And these are from the, the very aggressive 4-plus posterior subcapsular cataract. Again, we're not going to worry about it. So sealing up the incisions here, a beautifully constructed incision with that diamond keratome, so it's going to seal well. And let's go inside here, remove any residual viscoelastic, kind of doing an angle sweep. If you don't know about the angle sweep, you haven't followed cataract coach long enough, because I teach you all about the angle sweep. That angle sweep, sweep is your friend, because it gets out viscoelastic from that angle, IA probe. When you notice there's too much viscoelastic that's stuck in the angle, IA probe helps again. So here at the end, let's, that looks great now. Now let's hydrate up the incisions, get that lens beautifully positioned, and we'll call this a day. And this patient will bring it back in a few months and do a YAG laser capsulotomy for the posterior capsule. But again, this patient had 20-20 vision on post-op day one, was so happy, and I was so relieved that this VIP patient, and all my patients are VIPs, by the way, had a beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching. Remember, cataractcoach.com, I got a whole series there for you, all about complete cataract cases. That's where I do all the surgeries. And you can watch them start to finish unedited. Check it out.